working. Okay. Uh, hello, guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Danilo. I'm working at Logantris, a branch of Rapid7, and I'm going to talk about moving away from MVC. Uh, let's first bring up the context. Like, since we start developing apps, we start with punched cards and then we move to terminal with common lines. Then we had the uh, GraphQ user interface, and now we have VR. But let's focus on GraphQ user interface, especially web development. <laughs> so we had a few years ago, like 10 years ago, I don't know if a few for you, but <laughs> it's a few for me. Uh, and uh, we had a bunch of technology that was bringing on certain level, like leveling up the our user experience. But at a certain cost, like we had like code highly coupled, uh, less maintainable, and uh, poor readability because everything was together, like the logic and the rendering and everything there. So this led us to difficult to test, poor quality of product, and consequently uh, not reliable software. So came up MVC, bring new promises, and MVC also uh, MVC has advantages and also disadvantages. Uh, some advantages is that, like you have uh, models and your models can be delivered in different interface and you can change easily the interface of the model. Also, it promises you can test it easily, but it's partially true. Uh, the advantages of the MVC is like the view controllers, they are highly coupled to each other and the views and controllers depend on models. So it means that if you change your model, you consequently need to change your controller and your viewer. So uh, when and when not use MVC, uh, as usual in industry, uh, depend on the project, but I'll try to basically split up in two different contexts. One is single model context and the other one is multi-model context. Single model context are applications like uh, crude applications, uh, REST, APIs, web services, all then it's easy to use MVC. But if when you have like multi-model context that you have multimodal being brought to your page and then you have a mix between them, you create a new model over it and you need to hold that transient state. It's a bit complex to keep with the MVC handling all that changes with actions and it's a mess. So what are we gonna do for that? For Sam to rescue. I don't know if everybody heard about Sam. Sam's uh, presentation uh, design pattern, uh, it's state action model. And it's based it's based on two principles. Uh, the relation between views and models must be functional, and uh, the state state mutation it's a first class citizen in programming mo model. Also, uh, because it's a, a abstraction of kind of abstraction of flux, you have the characters of flux like composition. You the way you develop your components. You have unidirectional data flow that makes your app more predictable. You have freedom from DSLs. I don't know if everybody knows what is DSLs, but it's when you are able to subscribe something. Uh, but it's partially true because you still have state. If you are working with reactive program, you have observers, you can subscribe, so it's partially true. So uh, also as a, like, other characteristics is notable, n notable uh, it's split mutation. You cannot just take your state and, okay, my state dot count equals state dot count plus one. It's an implicit, implicit change. So you need to explicit, you propose your change and apply your change to your state. So that's the way it works. And also you have the state mm, uh, static mental model that's actually the single state tree. So uh, Sam is not a silver bullet. Uh, it's just came to help us with a uh, new challenge that we were facing along with the web development and evolution of devel the, uh, app development. Uh, of course, has it its advantages. So the granularity, it's increased because you, it depending on the way you split and you organize your code, uh, you have a lot of files, but it's something that maybe you can manage. But so far, uh, it's attending the expectation of the community and I don't have anything to complain for now. So, do you have any questions? 